see you have your famous rifle with you. Oh, yeah, I carry it for identity, Steve. Kind of a trademark of my show. Uh-huh. You know, like the billboard girl is a trademark of your show. Yeah. Uh, Steve, you want to swap? The iconic rifleman was a hero both on and off the screen. The Rifleman. But beneath the fame and glory, Chuck Connors hid a web of deep secrets that's remained concealed for decades. Behind the fame, Connors grappled with personal demons that threatened to consume him. Multiple marriages and divorces, a spiraling career after the rifleman's success. His life was not what you think. What drove this beloved actor to the brink? Join us as we uncover the startling, never-before-seen secrets of Chuck Connors, the rifleman. Mark, you don't always have to be better than everybody. With a rifle or anything else, as long as a man can do what he has to do when it counts, just having people call you best isn't important. Connor's entry into acting, a captivating story. In the landscape of Hollywood's golden era, the transition from sports to acting wasn't a common trajectory. Yet for Chuck Connors, a twist of fate and a chance encounter would set his life on a path from the baseball diamond to the silver screen. How did a talented athlete find himself in the spotlight of the film industry? It's a story that begins on a minor league baseball field and unfolds into a cinematic career marked by notable roles alongside some of the industry's most revered stars. Chuck Connors, known for his towering presence and athletic prowess, was playing for the Los Angeles Angels, a minor league team, when his life took a dramatic turn. Picture this. A casting director from MGM, Bill Grady, happens to be in the stands. What catches Grady's eye isn't just Connors' skill with a bat or glove, but his natural flair for entertainment, particularly his charismatic hijinks and larger-than-life personality. It's often said that Hollywood is a place where dreams are made, but sometimes it's also a place of unexpected discoveries. For Connors, this was precisely the case. His first major break in the film industry came with a role in the 1952 film Pat and Mike. The movie, featuring the legendary duo of Spencer Tracy and Katherine Hepburn, was a significant starting point for Connors. Imagine the leap from playing baseball to sharing screen space with two of the most iconic figures in Hollywood. In Pat and Mike, Connors had a chance to showcase his versatility beyond the sports field. This role was a stepping stone, laying the foundation for a career that would see him transcend his athletic image. Connors' early film roles were varied, painting a picture of an actor not confined to a single genre or character type. In South Sea Woman, Connors appeared alongside Burt Lancaster, another actor known for his physicality. The film, a mix of comedy, drama, and action, set in World War II, offered Connors a canvas to display his rugged charm and ability to hold his own alongside established stars. Perhaps one of the most endearing and memorable roles of his early career was in the classic 1957 film Old Yeller. Here, Connors played a stern but loving father, a role that resonated with audiences and showcased his range as an actor. Old Yeller, a family drama set in post-Civil War Texas, is often remembered for its emotional depth and the poignant relationship between a boy and his dog. Connors' portrayal in the film added a layer of authenticity and warmth, further cementing his place in the industry as a versatile actor. The Rifleman rise to fame. The Rifleman was groundbreaking for its time. Set in the 1880s in the fictional town of North Fork, New Mexico Territory, it featured Lucas McCain, a widowed father and Union Army veteran of the American Civil War, living with his son, Mark. The show's depiction of a single parent navigating the challenges of raising a child alone was a first in primetime television. Lucas McCain wasn't just any character. He was a father figure, a moral compass, and a man of action all rolled into one. His relationship with his son, played by Johnny Crawford, was a central element of the show, offering a mix of life lessons, paternal love, and the occasional overprotectiveness. 
Connor's portrayal of Lucas McCain resonated deeply with audiences. His character was a stark contrast to the typical Western heroes of the time. Lucas McCain was a straight-shooting, morally upright individual, yet he was also a man with a deep sense of responsibility and paternal care. This complexity made the character relatable and admired by a broad audience, from young children to adults. McCain's iconic modified Winchester model 1892 rifle, which he used with precision and speed, became a symbol of the character's prowess and a memorable element of the series. The series' success was not just due to Connors' compelling portrayal, but also to its writing. The Rifleman didn't shy away from the harsh realities of life in the Old West. It was a show where the good guys didn't always win, and the lessons learned were often hard-hitting. This approach to storytelling, combined with Connors' quiet charisma, propelled the series to become the fourth highest-rated show on television during its run, Challenges in Hollywood. After the curtains closed on The Rifleman, Chuck Connors found himself in a unique predicament, a situation quite familiar in the glittering yet unforgiving world of Hollywood, typecasting. This situation often confronts actors who portray an iconic character so convincingly that the audience and industry professionals struggle to dissociate them from that role. For Connors, his portrayal of Lucas McCain was so powerful that it became his identity in the eyes of the audience and the industry. Post The Rifleman, Connors continued to pursue acting roles in both television and film. Despite the shadow cast by Lucas McCain, he managed to secure parts in various projects. Take Arrest and Trial, for instance, where Connors played John Egan, a lead role that offered a new flavor of his acting skills. Then there was Branded, where he stepped into the shoes of Jason McCord. Both roles were stark departures from The Righteous Cowboy, yet neither could step out of the large silhouette cast by Lucas McCain. Then, one of his most critically acclaimed roles came with his performance in the landmark miniseries Roots. Here was Chuck Connors, the quintessential Western hero, taking on the complex and controversial role of a slave owner. In this series, which traced the history of an African-American family over several generations, Connors proved his ability to step outside of the box that he had been placed in by Hollywood, and play a very different role in a critically and socially significant series. What's more, this performance earned him an Emmy nomination, establishing his talent and depth as an actor. Throughout the 1970s and beyond, Connors continued to flex his acting muscles with guest appearances in various TV shows and films. He even returned to his anthology television roots with Night Gallery, which delved into the realms of horror and the supernatural, then went for a different swim in Flipper, a family movie about a boy and his pet dolphin. Both these roles offered Connors the opportunity to explore diverse genres and showcase a different side of his acting skills. But despite these efforts and successes, the typecasting that stemmed from The Rifleman proved to be a persistent obstacle in Connor's acting career. The strength and popularity of Lucas McCain as a character were so enduring that they continued to define Connors in the eyes of many, both within the industry and among the audience, marriages, and personal life. As Chuck Connors stepped away from the dusty trails of The Rifleman, his personal life turned out to be as complex and intriguing as the characters he portrayed on screen. His marital journey, marked by three marriages, and his off-screen escapades painted a stark contrast to his wholesome television image. Connor's first walk down the aisle was with Elizabeth Jane Riddell, a romance that blossomed from a chance encounter at one of his baseball games. The couple got married in 1948, and their union brought forth four sons, Michael, Jeffrey, Stephen, and Kevin. They were the perfect picture of domesticity, and Connor seemed like the perfect family man. However, behind the scenes, they were facing profound challenges, as the rifleman's on-screen persona turned out to be very different from how he behaved in his private life. Connor's issues of infidelity began to surface, 
leading to the couple's divorce in 1961 after 13 years together. The end of this marriage marked the beginning of a pattern that would repeat in Connor's life, where the idealized image on the screen clashed with reality. In 1963, Connors married Kamala Devi, an Indian actress he met on the set of Geronimo. Despite the promise of a new beginning, the same old patterns emerged, with infidelity once again playing a central role in the unraveling of their union, leading to their divorce a decade later. Following the end of his second marriage, Connors married Faith Quabius, a former Playboy Bunny, in 1977. Quabius, a former Playboy Bunny, was significantly younger than Connors. This marriage, like his previous ones, was short-lived, ending in divorce three years later in 1980. It was a relationship that echoed his earlier marital patterns, brief, troubled, and reflecting a casual approach to commitment. Connor's personal relationships, when seen together with his career, provide a compelling and humanizing perspective on an actor who is so well known for his iconic television roles. It's a telling reminder that the figures we see on screen often have off-screen stories that are far more intricate and layered. Political Status and Activism In the narrative of Chuck Connor's life, there lies one aspect that is rarely discussed but still significant, his political activism and stance. In a Hollywood often characterized by liberal leanings, Chuck Connors stood out for his staunch conservative views and active support for Republican candidates. So, what does it mean for an actor celebrated for his roles in Westerns to navigate the political landscape of Hollywood? For Connors, it meant wearing his conservative beliefs on his sleeve, unapologetically. He was a fervent supporter of Republican candidates, a stance that set him apart in an industry where such views were less commonly expressed. Connors' involvement in political campaigns wasn't just a matter of endorsing candidates. It was a testament to his deep-seated convictions and his willingness to stand up for what he believed in, even if it meant swimming against the prevailing tides. Connors' support for the Vietnam War adds another layer to the story. At a time when anti-war sentiment was gaining momentum, especially in the artistic and creative circles of Hollywood, Connors' pro-war stance was both bold and controversial. He was not just a passive observer in the political arena. He actively advocated for the war, aligning himself with a cause that was increasingly unpopular, particularly among his industry peers. His support for the Vietnam War reflected his broader political views, marked by a strong sense of patriotism and a belief in American military intervention. Navigating the political landscape of Hollywood as a conservative icon was no easy feat for Connors. In a world where liberal voices were more pronounced and dominant, Connors' conservative viewpoint made him somewhat of an outlier. His political stance was at odds with the mainstream currents in Hollywood, and this sometimes put him in a challenging position, both professionally and personally. Yet Connors remained steadfast in his beliefs, undeterred by the potential for professional or social backlash. Connection with Soviet leader Leonid Brezhnev In a tale that seems almost scripted for Hollywood itself, Chuck Connors, an American actor and star of The Rifleman, forged an unexpected and intriguing connection with Soviet leader Leonid Brezhnev. This unique relationship stemmed from the popularity of The Rifleman in the Soviet Union and led to a series of events that highlight the transcendent power of entertainment across geopolitical boundaries. The Rifleman, a quintessential American Western, found an unlikely audience in the Soviet Union. During the Cold War era, American television shows were rarely broadcast in the Soviet Union, making The Rifleman an exception, rather than the rule. The show's appeal in the USSR was not just due to its gripping storytelling and Connor's compelling portrayal of Lucas McCain, but also because it resonated with Brezhnev himself. The Soviet leader's fondness for the show was a testament to the universal themes of justice, fatherhood, and morality that The Rifleman encapsulated. Their first meeting occurred in 1973 during Brezhnev's visit to the United States. 
Connors gifted Brezhnev a pair of Colt single-action army revolvers, a gesture that significantly delighted the Soviet leader. This meeting marked the beginning of an unexpected friendship between the American actor and the Soviet head of state. The gift of the revolvers symbolized a unique cultural exchange and mutual admiration, transcending the political and ideological divides of the Cold War era. This friendship was not just a superficial interaction between a fan and a celebrity. Brezhnev, who rarely left the Soviet Union, expressed his admiration and excitement in a memorable way by jumping into Connor's arms during their meeting. The significance of this interaction was not lost on the media, capturing the attention of newspapers globally. The bond between Connors and Brezhnev continued to develop, leading to Brezhnev inviting Connors to visit the Soviet Union. Connors' relationship with Brezhnev was so significant that, upon the Soviet leader's death in 1982, Connors sought to be part of the official U.S. delegation to attend his funeral, a request that was ultimately denied. Connors' desire to attend the funeral was a reflection of the genuine bond that had formed between the two men, transcending their roles as representatives of opposing superpowers. Connors' connection with Brezhnev was more than just a curious footnote in his life. It underscored the power of cultural diplomacy and the role of entertainment in building bridges across seemingly insurmountable divides. The friendship between the American actor and the Soviet leader serves as a reminder of the common humanity that can be found even in the midst of political tension and ideological conflict. It highlights how cultural exports like television can have far-reaching and unexpected impacts, fostering connections and understanding between people from vastly different worlds, early life and athletic beginnings. Chuck Connors, a name synonymous with rugged charm and on-screen heroism, began his journey in the humble neighborhood of Bay Ridge in Brooklyn, New York. Born on April 10, 1921, to Irish immigrant parents, Connors' early life was set against the backdrop of the Great Depression, a period that undoubtedly shaped his character and resilience. Growing up in Bay Ridge, a melting pot of cultures and communities, Connors' childhood was quintessentially urban, yet grounded in the values of hard work and family. The Great Depression, with its economic hardships, was a formative experience for Connors and his family. Despite these challenging times, Connors' parents instilled in him a sense of determination and the importance of striving for excellence. Connors' athletic prowess was evident from a young age. As a teenager, he attended Adelphi Academy, a private preparatory school in Brooklyn, where he first showcased his remarkable athletic talents. It was at Adelphi Academy that Connors earned an athletic scholarship, a testament to his skills in various sports, including basketball and baseball. This scholarship opened the doors to Seton Hall University, a pivotal chapter in Connors' athletic and academic journey. At Seton Hall University, Connors continued to shine as a multi-sport athlete. It was here on the baseball fields of Seton Hall that he earned the nickname Chuck. The origin of this nickname is rooted in his habit of encouraging pitchers with shouts of Chuck it to me. This catchy phrase, emblematic of his enthusiastic spirit, soon caught on with his teammates and spectators, and the name Chuck stuck with him for the rest of his life. Connor's time at Seton Hall was interrupted by World War II. Heeding the call of duty, Connors joined the United States Army. During the war, he served as a tank warfare instructor, a role that required discipline, leadership, and a deep understanding of military tactics. His service in the Army was not only a demonstration of his patriotism, but also a period that honed his leadership skills and resilience. His journey from the streets of Bay Ridge to the fields of Seton Hall and the battlefields of World War II was the prologue to a life that would later unfold in the bright lights of Hollywood and the annals of television history. Professional Sports Career Chuck Connors' transition from a World War II veteran to a professional athlete is a story of remarkable talent and versatility. Post-WWI, 
Connors embarked on a dual sport career that would set him apart as one of the few athletes to play in both Major League Baseball and the National Basketball Association. Connors' journey in professional basketball began with the Rochester Royals, now known as the Sacramento Kings. His stint with the Royals was a significant step in his athletic career, showcasing his skills on the basketball court. However, it was with the Boston Celtics, a team he joined for the 1946-1947 season, that Connors would make history. In a remarkable feat, Connors became the first professional basketball player to shatter a backboard. This occurred during pre-game practice before the Celtics' first home game of their inaugural season. The incident was not only a testament to Connors' physical prowess, but also marked a unique moment in basketball history. Connors' passion for sports was not limited to basketball. His true love lay in baseball, a game he had cherished since childhood. This passion led him to a career in Major League Baseball, starting with a stint on the practice squad of the Brooklyn Dodgers. His dream of playing for the Dodgers, his boyhood heroes, was realized, albeit briefly. Connors played in a single game for the Dodgers before being sent back to the minor leagues, specifically to the Montreal Royals. His time in Major League Baseball also included a season with the Chicago Cubs in 1951, where he played 66 games as a first baseman and occasional pinch hitter. While Connors' athletic achievements in baseball were modest compared to his acting career, his involvement in professional sports was a significant chapter in his life. His brief but eventful stints with the Brooklyn Dodgers and the Chicago Cubs in the major leagues were milestones in his sports career. They were a symbol of his dedication and love for the game, even as he transitioned towards a new career in Hollywood continued athletic involvement. Chuck Connors, an actor who seamlessly transitioned from professional sports to Hollywood stardom, never lost his connection to the athletic world. This ongoing bond with sports was most notably demonstrated in 1966, when Connors played a crucial role in resolving a major labor dispute in Major League Baseball, specifically involving the Los Angeles Dodgers players. In 1966, the Dodgers players, led by stars like Don Drysdale and Sandy Koufax, were embroiled in a contentious strike over the reserve clause, a contractual stipulation that essentially bound a player to a team indefinitely. This strike threatened to disrupt the entire season, posing a significant challenge to the league's operations and the players' careers. Enter Chuck Connors, a former professional athlete with a unique understanding of both the sports and entertainment industries. His efforts helped bridge the gap between the players and team management, leading to a resolution that allowed the 1966 season to proceed. This episode in Connors' post-Hollywood career is a striking example of how his love for sports continued to influence his life, highlighting his unique position as someone who transcended the boundaries of sports and entertainment, understanding the nuances and needs of both worlds. Connors' ongoing love for sports was not limited to his involvement in resolving disputes. He remained an avid sports fan throughout his life, often seen attending various sporting events. His presence at games, whether baseball, basketball, or others, was a testament to his enduring passion for sports. This ongoing engagement with the sports world was a part of who he was, intertwining with his identity as much as his roles in Hollywood. This aspect of his life story adds another layer to the narrative of a man who navigated his way through two highly competitive fields with equal passion and commitment, health issues and death. The final chapter in the life of Chuck Connors, a man renowned for his roles in sports and on screen, was marked by a battle with health issues, ultimately leading to his death in 1992. His journey from an athlete to a celebrated actor in the entertainment industry was not just a tale of success and fame, but also one of personal challenges, particularly his health struggles stemming from a heavy smoking habit. Connors, like many of his era, was a heavy smoker. This habit, prevalent and less stigmatized at the time, would have a profound impact on his health. 
The dangers of smoking, now widely recognized, were less understood during much of Connor's lifetime. Unfortunately, the consequences of this habit caught up with him later in life. In a poignant twist of fate, the man who had portrayed so many strong, resilient characters on screen found himself in a vulnerable fight against lung cancer. Despite his illness, Connors' spirit and resilience remained strong. He faced his health challenges with the same determination that he had exhibited throughout his life. However, lung cancer is a fierce opponent, and in November 1992, Chuck Connors passed away. His death marked the end of an era not just for his family and friends, but for the countless fans who had grown up watching him on their television screens. The news of his death was met with a wave of tributes and reminiscences. Fans remembered the characters he brought to life, while colleagues recalled his professionalism, warmth, and charisma. Connor's legacy in the entertainment industry is multifaceted. He was not just the actor who played Lucas McCain in The Rifleman. He was a symbol of a certain kind of rugged masculine ideal that prevailed in mid-20th century America. His roles often portrayed strong, moral characters who stood up for what was right, resonating with audiences across the country. Beyond his most famous role, Connors had a career that spanned diverse characters and genres, showcasing his versatility and talent as an actor. In 1984, Chuck Connors' contributions to the entertainment industry were immortalized when he was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame cementing his place in the annals of Hollywood history. This accolade came at a time when Connors had already established himself as a household name, and it served to prove his enduring influence in the industry. But most importantly, it stands as a symbol of permanence in the fast-paced and ever-changing world of entertainment and evidence of his lasting appeal and the timeless nature of his work. Connors' star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame is located at 6838 Hollywood Boulevard, a location visited by millions of tourists every year. For fans and admirers, it is a place to remember and celebrate the actor who brought so much to his roles, both on and off the screen. Connors had made a lasting impact on the entertainment world, one that would not be forgotten. His portrayal of Lucas McCain in particular has become a part of American television history, an archetype of the Western hero that continues to influence the genre. Chuck Connors' passing was the closing of a chapter in the story of Hollywood's golden era. His legacy, however, lives on, preserved in the films and television shows he starred in. Thanks for watching another episode. Click the next video on your screen for more. Your screen for more. Your screen for more. Your screen for more.